treasure we have as we plumb the depths of this congregation. Today and last week, we heard from six of our fellow travelers on this journey of life and the ways in which God is using them. They are not the only ones. We are surrounded by fellow travelers in this congregation and the depth of spiritual maturity is so profound. When we hear each other's stories, it inspires us to greater vision, to greater love. And, and so it happened again today. So thank you, Dawn. Thank you, Angie. Thank you, Kathleen, for sharing with us today. Let us move into a place of prayer. Let us pray for the needs of the world, for the healing of earth and all its creatures, for the church's willingness to say yes to God's call, to live into ways of justice and mercy. We pray for the healing of divisions between people. We pray for leaders of nations. And we thank you, especially, oh God, for what turned out to be a peaceful transfer of power this past Wednesday in our own country. We pray for countries who have great wealth that they would be humble and be used for service and love and compassion. We pray for those who have too much power and those with destructive weapons, that they would lay down their power and weapons. For those who are victims of others' idolatry, for children who have no one to listen to their cries for food and shelter, for parents who cannot answer the needs of their children. We pray for peacemakers and diplomats, for those who use the law to make policies for the greater good, for the common good. for all who are in pain and in need of care, especially those whom we name silently in our hearts. And I offer a prayer that Reverend Stephen Garnis Holmes wrote this past week on January 20th. A people as one rise from fear and grief and choose hope and justice. People do rise. People get up from familiar nets and follow into an unknown future, trusting God with their lives. Every moment we are invited to leave the familiar. Clouds still hover, the dawn comes slow, but in the receding darkness, we bear no angry torches instead. We raise candles of hope, the light of love. We become the future we choose. For a new day, we give thanks and we follow in a new way, knowing for it to be a new day, we must become new people, continuing to hear God's call upon us. We celebrate getting up from what we know and walking step by step into what we don't know with the one who knows us and knows us deeply. God bless us, God anoint us, God lead us. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us join Judy as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth 
as it is on heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For this is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for coming to share in the worship of God among the faithful followers of this congregation, the people of United Church in University Place, even though we gather from our homes that may be outside of University Place. Again and again, you tune in, but you do more than tune in, you show up. You show up with your lives, with your presence, with your hearts full of praise for God and following in the discipleship of Jesus and in giving back of your lives and your treasures, your time. And thank you for continuing to support the ministry of this church. It's because of your faithful support that we are able to continue in ministry. And so I turn back to Judy as she leads us in our prayer of dedication. God of abundant life, enrich the ministries of our congregation as you continue to call your faithful people in the world. Bless the gifts that have been given to support the ministries of this church as expressions of our love and commitment that they may bring closer to fulfillment your reign of peace and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I'm not aware of announcements uh, for our life together. If you have announcements, please take the time to place them in the chat and we will attend to, to those um, in a moment. I want to offer a benediction in the words of young poet, Amanda Gorman, who uh, is a youth poet laureate who recited her poem that she wrote earlier this month, The Hill We Climb at President Biden's inauguration this week. Here is a small portion of her words and it is worth listening to the entire thing multiple times over. Scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree and no one shall make them afraid. If we are to live up to her own time, then victory will not lie in the blade, but in all the bridges we've made. That is the promise to Glade, the hill we climb, if only we dare. It's because being American is more than a pride we inherit. It is the past we step into and how we repair it. The new dawn blooms as we free it. For there is always light, if only we are brave enough to see it, if only we are brave enough to be it. Our benediction hymn is, Lord, you have come to the lakeshore. Let us listen and sing. <laughs> 